Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're gonna continue our journey on our COVID-19 prevention app that covers AP Computer Science Principles, Big Idea 3.8, Iteration, 3.9, Developing Algorithms, and 3.10, List. In the past video, we went over how to design the app, and you designed that using the skills you learned throughout this school year. In this video, we're actually gonna code the game. It's a memory game that is going to have the five common things to do to prevent COVID-19, and you have to remember what they say and click, kind of like Simon. But let's go over 3.8, 3.9, and 3.10. This is 3.8, iteration. You can see express an algorithm that uses iteration without using a programming language. Iteration is repeating portion of an algorithm. Iteration repeats a specific number of times or until a given condition is met. Here's the learning objective. For iteration, write iteration statements, determine the result and side effects of iteration statements. And again, make sure that you look through the essential knowledge on the right side, because that is what you will see on the AP Computer Science Principles exam. So we are going to have iteration inside of our memory game instead of our COVID app. We're gonna have a for loop. Alliteration can be for loops, while loops, those type of things. We will cover this in this app. So let's look at 3.9. 3.9 is developing algorithms. We've done this throughout the entire school year. We've actually developed algorithms way back when the school year started with my Star Wars name. We've developed algorithms throughout, but let's look at this objective. Compare multiple algorithms, determine if they yield the same effect or not. And you obviously, again, you want to read through the essential knowledge. And if we scroll down for algorithms, Algorithms, create algorithms. Again, we've done that the entire year. We've been making apps this entire year. Combine and modify existing algorithms. We have done that and we are going to do that in this app. And lastly, let's look at 3.10. 3.10 is list. We've also used list this entire year. We've used it in my Star Wars name, our first app we did way back at the beginning of the school year. But let's look at the learning objectives. For list operations, write expressions that use list indexing and list procedures. Evaluate expressions that use the list indexing and list procedures. And again, make sure that you look at the essential knowledge because that is what you will see on the AP Computer Science Principles exam. For algorithms involving elements of a list, write iteration statements to traverse a list. We will do that in this app. Determine the result of an algorithm that includes list traversals. Again, we will do that. And make sure, again, you look at all of the learning objectives because these are the things you will see on AP Classroom you will also see them on the AP exam at the end of the year. All right, so let's look at our page. You can see I give you certain things that you need to download and they are here, including the sounds, some of the images. We've already designed this, so you don't need the images, but you will need the sounds if you did not upload those. This is what we're gonna be working with. This is the memory game that we were talking about and it's gonna say disinfect and you're gonna to have to click disinfect and then it'll say wash hands and you have to click on wash hands and we're gonna code that entire thing. And you can see here is an example of the app. So let's just show you it. This is to get the high scores. Social distance, social distance, wash hands, social distance, disinfect, wash hands, social distance. Wash hands. So you get the point. That's what we're gonna build here. And let's go ahead and get started. So again, here's our app. We have it designed. Let's go to our game screen. And we have everything here. And you should also have everything here. All we need to do now is actually code it. So to start coding it, let's go ahead to blocks. And you can see our labels here, wash hands, disinfect, hand sanitizer. We're gonna use these. So this is my label wash hands inside of the text. I'm gonna use this property. So versus typing it again, I'm just gonna call label wash hands text. That way I have that. Disinfect, label disinfect dot text hand sanitizer label hand sanitizer dot text so we've already written those things here we're just going to use the references to actually get the value which is the text that the game is saying so let's start with that so we're going to need a variable and variables is from 3.1 this is call it COVID-19 preventions and we're going to make this variable an empty list 
Remember 3.10 is list. Now, when the game loads, I want to grab all of the values from label wash hands, label disinfect, label hand sanitizer, label wear mask, and label social distance. So again, I wanna do this after the game loads. So what are we gonna do? Let's go ahead and make a procedure for that. Remember in the create performance task, you will have to make your own procedures. So let's just call it load COVID-19 prevention. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna, now I'm gonna go ahead and make a list. And we got five things, so I'm gonna need five items, that's three. That's four, that's five. And now I'm just gonna go get these values. So label wash hands, I'm gonna get the text. Now, again, just looking at it, label wash hands text is actually this, wash hands. And I'm gonna do that for each one of these guys. I'm gonna get label disinfect. I'm gonna get label hand sanitizer dot text. I'm gonna get label wear mask dot text. And I'm gonna get label social distance dot text. So I've made an empty list originally, and then now I'm adding and I'm loading all of the values into that list, which will now be wash hands, disinfect, hand sanitizer, wear mask, and social distance. What this is going to do is the game is going to pick randomly from these five things and add on to a list that we have that, that you need to follow the answers in order. So. Let's go ahead and kind of continue. We're gonna need, you saw how it said disinfect, wash hands. So we're gonna need a list that continually adds one of these five things to that list and says it. So let's make another variable and let's call it answers in order. And again, I'm gonna make it an empty list. Again, 3.10 is list. And what I really wanna do is I wanna pull a random person from here and then add it to the list. So right now it's empty. So let's say I pulled a random thing called wash hands. I would add wash hands to this list. So now that list will have wash hands in it. Then I would pull hand sanitizer. So then it would have wash hands, hand sanitizer in this list. And that's what we wanna to do to get our game going. In order to do that, are you just gonna press play and then it will start the instant. So let's pull out our play button. And what I wanna do is let's make a procedure so we can just have everything in that one procedure. Make another procedure and let's call it play game, add level to sequence. So again, what? let's add our little comments. Again, it's always great to comment. And what are we gonna do here? We're gonna randomly pick an item from COVID-19 preventions list and add it to the answers in order list for the user to repeat those actions. All right, so I can go ahead and let's just put start game and put play inside of here. So what do we wanna do first? I want to randomly get an item from here. And when I get that item from here, I wanna add it to this inside of here. And I also wanna say that item. So First, I'm gonna need a local variable. That way I can hold the random item that I picked from here. So these are global variables. Let's make a local variable. And that is right here. And I'm gonna call this, let's call it prevention selected, right? Or let's call it random prevention. And what I'm going to do is simply go to my list. I'm gonna pick a random item from the list and it's gonna be our COVID-19 list. So what is this doing? It's randomly picking from this list of five. This list of five, again, is wash hands, disinfect, hand sanitizer, wear a mask, and social distance. What do I wanna do with those? Now that I have a random guy, I want to add it to my answers in order. So I'm gonna go back to list. I'm gonna go right here, add item to a list. The list I wanna add to is answers in order. And what do I wanna add? I wanna add a random prevention. So now if this was empty, it will add one of these random guys to this list. So in 3.10 it's talking about iterating over a list, adding to a list, modifying a list. We have two lists here and they're actually working together, pulling one from here and putting it in there and it keeps adding to this. That's all what 3.10 is about. So the next thing we wanna do, let's just say, let's speak and let's see that this is working. So we have our text to speech. I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna pull this in, and all I'm gonna do is just say it for right now. 
So let's just test this. Again, if I press play game, it's just calling this. So it should randomly pick something and then say it. So let's go ahead and try. Well, here's an issue. Pick a random item. Pick a random item from an empty list. So again, COVID-19 is empty. Load is supposed to do that, but we have not loaded it yet. We actually need to load, load our COVID-19 preventions. And we probably want to do that when we start our game. We didn't make a start game, so I am going to make a start game and let's put that inside of there. So let's go ahead and just really simple down here. Let's call a start game. And anytime we start a game, let's make sure that we, for now, we're just gonna load our COVID-19. And I'm gonna put start game before play. So now let's try it. So again, what's happened when somebody presses play, I'm gonna start game right now. To start the game, I just need to load my COVID-19 preventions, which means I add all of these guys into this. When I click play game, now that I have loaded, I'm gonna pick a random item from this list. I'm gonna add it to answers in order. And I'm gonna say that. So let's press play. Hand sanitizer. So you can see it picked hand sanitizer randomly. Social distance. It picked social distance. Social distance. It picked social distance again. Wash hands. It picked wash hands. So it's picking one item randomly and it is saying that. But this list is actually not just one thing. It's a bunch of items. Every time we randomly pick, we're adding to the list. So let me just show you. This is our title screen up here. Just to show you what is in our answers in order, I'm gonna take this label game title. I'm gonna change the text inside of here. And I'm gonna change it to be the answers in order. Now again, we don't wanna do this for the game, I'm just showing you because you can't see what's in answers in order unless we do this step right here. So when I press play, now up here is gonna change and show you all the things that are inside of answers in order. Wear mask. So you see it said wear mask. Wear mask is the last thing that it added, but look what's all in the list. Hand sanitizer, social distance, social distance, wash hands, wear mask. So let's go ahead and press play again. Wash hands. So you can see wear a mask, wash hands. Wear a mask. Wear a mask gets added. Wear a mask. Wear a mask gets added. So this is a list over here and everything is kind of working. But remember, we want it to say all of these things. So what happens if we just try to, instead of pick, saying the random item, what if we just do this? Answers in order. You would think it would say all of these things inside of the list, right? But let's see. Left square graphic hand sanitizer, social distance, social distance, wash hands, wear masks, wash hands, wear masks, wear masks, hand sanitizer, right square bracket. So it does say it, but it's kind of weird. It's kind of slow. We don't want it to be like that. We actually want it to go a lot faster than that. So we're gonna iterate over this list. And if you remember from 3.10, one of the key arguments is write iteration statements to traverse a list. To traverse a list just simply means going from here to here to here to here, every item in that list. And you can do so in two ways. So for right now, I'm gonna get rid of that. And if we go to control, we have for each item, go to control, we have another for statement, and we have a while statement. So this is what your iteration. I can say for number one to five something. So let's just show you this. So for number one to five, let's just speak that number. So now I'm gonna disable this so you can just see this right now. For each number, one to five, and I can change this, speak the number. Five. Five. You're saying, well, what happened? It's only saying five. Well, in four statements, four statements run so fast that it doesn't have time to say each one of these unless we did a pause. What if I did it this way? For each item in, 
So let's say what for each item in our answer order, say the item. So I'm saying for each one of these guys, I want you to say the item. Answer is in order. Remember, that's what this is up here. I want you to say it. Over here, one to five, it only said the last thing. What do you think is going to happen if I did it this way? If I say for each thing inside of this list, let's check. So I just said the last thing. It didn't say each one of these. So again, it's running so fast because computers run milliseconds. It's not able to say all of these at the same time. We'd have to code that. And while statements are the same thing, while would be like, while one is less than 10, say something. If we use any of these three methods to iterate over the list, it goes so fast that it doesn't say it. It says only the last one. Well, what we can do is we can iterate over it and we can save it to a variable called sequence to say, and we will iterate over our list. So we would go through and grab each one of these and add each one to our sequence to say variable. And then we simply will say the variable and it will actually say all of these guys here. I'm saying for each item in the list, this would start at the beginning and go all the way to the end. I'm going to use this one for each item in the list. And I'm just going to delete all these guys. So let's go ahead and go back up here. I'm going to add in my for statement. Now for each item in answers in order, what do I want to do? I need to have another local variable. So I'm just going to pull this in and let's call it sequence to say, and I'm going to make it empty. Now inside of here for each item in the list, I'm going to say sequence to say, I'm going to do a join statement for my text. And what I want to have is I want to get whatever the sequence to say was, I'm going to add in a space. So inside of here, it looks like there's nothing, but I just put a space. I'm going to get one other thing. I'm going to add in the item from the list. So looking at the statement, I'm saying for each item in the list, I'm going to start at hand sanitizer. What is sequence to say? Sequence to say is blank. It's going to add hand sanitizer to sequence to say. So now sequence to say has hand sanitizer. Then it's going to go to the next item in the list, which is social distance. What is sequence to say? Well, currently it's hand sanitizer. It's going to add a space and it's going to add the current item, which is social distance. And it's going to go to the next item in the list. And this is how you iterate over a list. So what is sequence to say now? It is hand sanitizer space social distance. It's going to add a space. And what is the current item? The current item up here is social distance. So that's how we're going to iterate over this list. And all of that will be pretty much inside of here. Now, let me just show you by instead of changing the label to look like that, let's change the label to this. So here's the difference. This is your list. You see brackets and you see everything's with commas. Now I'm saying label is going to be equal to sequence to say that I made. It's pretty much this list separated by spaces. So let's press play. So you can see now it's all those things in order. And since this is just text, it should be able to say it a lot faster. So if I come here, let's enable instead of saying random prevention, let's say the sequence to say press play. And there you go. So that sets up our game. Now we simply have to do the next part, which is when someone actually presses these different guys that they match that. So let's do some cleanup. I'm going to clean out that again. I don't want my label to do to show the answer that wouldn't work. And let's refresh our companion screen. That way it goes back to normal. All right. So that is how it will work to set up. So next we have to deal with these guys down here. When you touch them, 
we are supposed to follow that order. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna move this up and let's pull out all of our images. So here's image, wash hands, here's image, disinfect, here's image, hand sanitizer, here's image, face mask, here's image, social distance. And those are our five things that reflect to this. So when someone presses this, we want to pass wash hands to, let's say check answer, right? So we're gonna to need to make a check answer for all of these guys. So I'm gonna to go to back to procedures, pull out this and let's pull it, call check answer. And we're gonna need input. For your create performance task, you will need to have a procedure that has input. So I'm gonna click on this, connect the input and let's call it answer. So all of these are simply gonna call this with a different answer and we'll check it. So all I have to do, go back to procedures, I made that procedure called check answer. I'm gonna pull that in here and check answer should call image wash hands. So it's gonna to go to our label wash hands and it's gonna pass the text wash hands. So it's gonna pass that. I'm gonna just duplicate this, bring it down. This is image disinfect. So it shouldn't be label wash hands. I can click on this though and it should be label disinfect. I'm gonna duplicate that, pull it down. This is hand sanitizer, so this should be label hand sanitizer.txt. Duplicate that, pull it down. This is image face mask, so this should be label face mask, label wear mask, and duplicate this. And this is social distance, so this should be label social distance.txt. Again, what this is are these values. If we come back here to design, label wash hands.txt is this, or label social distance dot text is this. So we're gonna pass, depending on what you touch, we're gonna to pass the label to the answer. So what are we doing to check? So to check, it's gonna be pretty simple. We wanna know if the answer is the current number. Well, here's the thing. We have a bunch of images. So I'm gonna go back and add in our little title at the top to show you how many images are in there and I'm gonna add in our answers in order so you can know it's a list. And we'll fix this at the end. Now let me just add my comment showing the list for now. That way we know to delete it later on. Whoa. So let's... Wear masks. Wear masks disinfect. Wear masks disinfect disinfect. So now we have three items in this list. So if I press wash hands or wear a mask here, it should only check that the first one is wash hands. And then it should move to the second number and check that the second number is disinfect. And then it should move to the third thing. And the third thing should be disinfect inside of that list. So we're gonna need to know what number in the sequence we are currently, the user is currently on. We're gonna need a variable. And let's pull that out and let's call it user answer number in sequence, I guess. And it started out at one because whenever the user starts, he's always gonna start at the first thing because he has to repeat one, two, three. He has to repeat everything in the list over and over again. So inside of here, I can check if the user answers in a sequence, I can check that number inside of the list. So the first thing in this list is wear a mask. So I'm gonna need an if statement. Let's say if, and what do I want to really check? I wanna compare the answer with the answer with the number inside of the list. So I'm gonna do compare text, I'm gonna text, I'm gonna pull in compare. I'm checking if the answer they passed is equal to the number inside of the list. Well, the user answer number in the list, one, I'm gonna to go to list and I'm gonna select an item from the list. The list we're pulling from is our answers in order. And the index is the user answer number. Let's just shorten that to the user answer number. So this is saying, is the answer I passed in equal to the same position inside the list? So if is it the first thing or the second thing or the third thing? Right now it's only the first thing. If it is, what do you wanna do? Well, we have 
a sound effect over here. And let's, let's just play that sound effect. And just to quickly show you, the sound effect that we have correct has the correct wave sound in it. And you got that from the very top inside of here. If you look inside of our sounds, you can see it has the correct that wave. So if I click the right picture that's equal to the same sequence in the list, then it should play the sound effect. Or else let's just say, let's do a show you that it's not working. Pull this in and I'm going to say text. I'm going to say wrong answer, right? All right, so let's just see what we're doing here. I'm going to click on these images because remember these images are now calling check answer. And it's passing what it wants to check. Wash hands, disinfect, hand sanitizer, wear a mask, social distance. It's going to check is the answer I'm passing in equal to the same position for number one. Number one should be wear a mask. If it is, I should hear a sound. If it is not, I should hear wrong answer. So the first thing in the list is wear a mask. If I click wash hands. Wrong answer. If I click disinfect. Wrong answer. If I click hand sanitizer. Wrong answer. If I click wear a mask, you can see it is right. If I click social distance. Wrong answer. So this is working, but we want to pretty much check the first thing and the second thing. So this number, if I change this to two, remember wear mask is right for number one, but for number two on the list, it should be disinfect. So if I click wear mask now, wrong answer. If I click disinfect, and even if I change to number three, because in our list, disinfect is also number three. Let's play again and see what it adds. Wear masks, disinfect, disinfect, wash hands. So now the fourth thing in the list, if I click on this, four, wash hands, disinfect is wrong. Wrong answer. Wash hands is not right. So this value needs to change from one until the end of the list. And the user has to get it right for each one of these guys. That's what we have to do. All right, so let's refresh the screen and let's just add in some new ones. So, wear so right now the list is wear masks, what's so one? Wear masks, wear masks, wear masks, wash hands. So let's work with this, wear masks, wear masks, wash hands. So we need to find a way to know this number, we need to update this number to at least three and know when it gets to three. So we need to know when the user has completed the entire sequence. If they have, then we want to add another random prevention to this list. If they haven't, we simply want to update this number right here. So if it's currently at one and they click wear mask, we want to update this number to two. So in order to figure out when we have completed the sentence, let's actually make a procedure for that. Let's go back to procedures. And instead of using a procedure that's self-contained, we're going to use a procedure that's going to return a value. And it's going to return whether the user has actually completed the sequence. So let's pull this out and let's call it user completed sequence. And let me just add a comment into this. So we're going to check if the user answer number is equal to the length of the answers in order, which means they picked all the correct images in order. All right, so that's what we wanna do down here. So it's really simple, I kinda set it right here. If the user number is equal to the length of the list. So if this number one is equal to the last, the length of the list, which is one, two, three, then we know the user has completed the sequence. So we're simply gonna go to math. We're gonna pull in our this. I'm gonna grab the user. I'm gonna grab the user answer number and I wanna know if it's the length of the list. I'm gonna go to list. I'm gonna pull in length of, and I wanna get our answers in order list. So whenever this number is equal to that, we know they've actually completed everything inside of the list. So now we can use this inside of here. I'm gonna pull this up here. So I'm gonna swap it, because I know I have to add more stuff in here. All right, so 
we're playing our sound effect up here. And what I want to do is I want to check if the user has completed the sequence. So I'm going to go back and do an if and put that inside of here. So they got it right. We're going to play the sound effect. But then in here, I want to know if they completed it, I want to add more values to the sequence. If they haven't, I want to update this number right here. I want to add one to it. That way it goes from the first thing to the second. All right, so we're saying if the user has completed the sequence, well, what do we really want to do? If the user completed the sequence, so when I get to three and I get it correct, what do I want to do? I want to add another prevention to the list. Well, we're already doing that. That's what this does. Play game, add level to list, right? So all I gotta do is call this procedure. So whenever the user completes the sequence, we're gonna call the procedure, play game, add level to sequence, and then it'll add a new prevention. If the user didn't complete the sentence, so right now the user answer is one. If I come over here and I click wear mask, it's still at one. The answer is still at one. So I can click this forever because the answer is still at one. I did not complete the sentence yet. I want to move this number from one to two. That way I can see if I can click wear mask, if I get it right or not. So if the user did not complete the sequence, I'm going to click on this little settings. Remember all MIT App Inventor that have this blue settings box, you can modify it. So I want to say, if I didn't complete the sentence, I'm going to do else. I want to add one to this value. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to set set. I'm going to go to subject called math. I'm going to pull this in and I'm going to update this value. This go back to math. I'm going to add one to it. So remember before I was just keep on clicking on this because we never move this number to two. Now when I click on this, this number is going to go to two, which means I need to click wear mask. And then if I click wear mask, I didn't complete this sentence sequence. So it's going to come down here. It's going to move it to three and I need to click wash hands. So let's see right now it's at one. I'm going to click wear mask. Now it's at two. So I clicked this once. It was at one, it moved to two. I clicked wear mask again, which is correct. It moved to three. Now, if I click wear mask, Wrong answer. it's looking for the third position because I update user answer number right here. So now wash hands, it wants me to select. Wear mask, wear mask, wash hands, wash hands. So look what happened up here. I selected the right answer for number three. And now it added wash hands. Why did it do that? I selected the right answer. It played the sound. Was I at the end of the sequence? Yes, I was because I was currently at wash hands. Okay, we'll pick a new level. That's what we just did. So now if I do this, you would think everything would work, but there is a little bug. Right now, user answer number is actually at four. We didn't, we didn't reset it back to one. So if I click on wear mask, which should be right, it's actually looking for wash hands. Watch. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Cause it's at number four. This number is now at four. We'd never reset it. So we need to actually reset that there. Where do we need to reset it? We can actually reset it right here if we wanted to. So I'm going to click on variables. I'll pull in user completed sequence. I'm just going to reset the user answer number back to one. And let's add a comment user completed sequence. So reset back to one. So they have to repeat it in the next round. I'll just pull this over here again. Always it's great to comment that way, you know what's going on inside of your code if you ever came back to it. So now we're resetting it and then it will add. So right now, again, it's at four. So I need to select wash hands. If I click where mass is going to be wrong. wrong answer. So it's at four. But now because I reset it when I'm at the end of the list, it should go back to one. And then I have to repeat this entire sequence. I know it seems a little bit confusing, but right now just think user answer is at number four. It's looking for me to push wash hands. When I push wash hands, it comes in here. It sets it back to one. Why does it set it back to one? Because I need to repeat this entire 
sequence. So let's go ahead and do it. Wash hands. Wear masks, wear masks, wash hands, wash hands, wash hands. So now you can see, now it should have reset it back to one. So now I need to follow the sequence. Wear a mask, wear a mask, wash hands, I need to do wash hands, wash hands. Wear masks, wear masks, wash hands, wash hands, wash hands, wash hands. You can see wash hands is getting called a lot. Let's do it one more time to see if we can get something different. Wear a mask, wear a mask, wash hands, wash hands, wash hands. Wear masks, wear masks, wash hands, wash hands, wash hands, wash hands, disinfect. All right, so there you go. This part is working. We are pretty much done, but we haven't added in our score. We also haven't added in our high score down here. So let's just go ahead and add in our simple score. So let's make a variable call score and let's make add in our zero. So here's where they complete the sequence. So let's add in the score here. So the score is gonna be score. We're gonna add one to the score when they complete the sequence. And we're gonna add one to it. And we need to update the label. So that's this label right here. And you can see if I scroll down, that is LBL score. I need to update this value. So I'm gonna come over here, LBL score. I'm gonna set the text. I'm gonna do a join statement. And first part will say score, the colon, and the second part will be this. So there we go. So now, I'm gonna refresh this because it's gotten kind of long. I want you to see the score getting updated. So play. You can see this works. Let's do disinfect, wash hands. See it. Disinfect, wash hands, disinfect, disinfect, wash hands. So you can see my score is working. The one thing I do want to do is I want to reset these values now. And in the next video, we'll deal with the high score. So inside of start over game, what do we want to do? We want to let's set our score back to zero. Let's set the answer number back to one whenever we start the game over. And also let's make sure our answers in order go back to an empty list. So if my game is over, I don't want it to start with this list. I want it to start over. So I'm gonna go and let's set that up too. So answers in order, it's gonna be a empty list. All right. And that's pretty much our game, it works. Obviously we wanna get rid of this part of it. So I'm gonna move this right now and delete that. And let's refresh the page. So now, click play. Wear masks. Wear masks disinfect. Wear masks disinfect, wash hands. Wear masks, disinfect, wash hands, wash hands. Wrong answer. So you can see I got the wrong answer there. And in the next unit, we're actually going to deal with this part of it. I'm just gonna delete it for now and get rid of this. So go ahead to the next video and we will learn about how to do the high score.